Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in wa ba'd. So tonight, inshallah ta'ala, we continue with our study of the tremendous work, Lumatul I'tiqad, um, Sufficiency in Creed, by Al-Imam Ibn Qudama, Rahimahullah ta'ala. Um, but before um, going into class tonight, I just wanted to mention a reminder. Just wanted to mention a reminder, right? And that reminder um, is about the zeal, right? And the attendance for lectures and talks, right? So it's around, around the zeal, right? For the attendance of, of lectures and, and talks. Right? So one of the things that we notice, right, and this isn't coming down on anyone or speaking ill of anyone, but it's just a what? Reminder, right? Just a reminder. So one of the things that we notice, right, when it comes to talks and lectures and things of that nature, that's connected to marriage, right? Or it's connected to what? Divorce, right? Or some type of issue like that. We find the zeal um, on a high level. Think that's true? Find the zeal on a on a high level, right? We find attendance at a find attendance on a on a high level, right? But um, if we ponder those issues, right, family issues, right, marriage and divorce and chula and, and things of that nature, right? We should understand, right? We should understand that the sounder our creed is. What's tonight's nice class? Sufficiency and creed, right? The sounder, right, that our creed is. Right, the more solid our family lives will be. Right, the sounder our creed is, the sounder our family lives will will be. Inshallah, right by the permission of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Right. And let's look at some examples. Right. Let's look at some examples. Right. All of this is a reminder and an encouragement to have the zeal for the classes of what creed. Right. To have a, have an extreme zeal and in and in a heavy zeal. Right, to make sure that you correct your, your creed, right? So we'll mention some examples, right? And this is a brief reminder, right? Hopefully there's some benefit found therein. Right? Tawheed will be, right? If a person understands, right? Tawheed will be, right? They understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our Lord. Right? They understand that. Right? If a person truly understands that, right, and again bring yourself back in the scope of of marital life. Right? Because when people when we attend the lectures on marriage, when we attend the lectures on divorce. We're hoping to do what? Hoping to learn some things in order to do what? Improve our marriage. Right? Want to improve or improve our, our family lives. Right? And there's nothing wrong with those lectures. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with them or anything like that, but we just want to talk about the, the zeal that we have, right? And everyone can self reflect, right? So if a person understands Tawheed will be, right? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our Lord, right? They understand that. Right? A person wouldn't hesitate in carrying out what? His commands. Right? And again, take yourself back to the household, right? Everyone in the house, husband, wife, children, right? All understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is their Lord and they have to carry out his what? Commands. And stay away from his what? Prohibitions. They understand that. How do you think that'll help the, the family life? How you don't have to, it's rhetorical, you don't have to answer it, but you know, how do you think that would be? Everybody in the house is trying to carry out the commands of Allah and everybody in the house is trying to stay away from the, from the prohibitions, uh, right? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has. Um, prohibited, right? Some of those commands that they were rushed to carry out, right? They were to, rushed to carry out, giving their spouse their what? Right. Rights, right? And if each spouse is understand, but it all stems from what? Knowing who? Allah who's the with the Allah. right? So everybody will rush to give each other their rights. The husband would give uh, the wife her rights, and the wife would give the husband his rights, right? Not so much so for him, but for the sake of who? Sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's connected to what? Creed. Direct effect on your what? Family life. Right? So people would, people would understand that. And, and we'll give brief examples. An, an example clear? Right? Let's move on, move on to another brief example because we still have some things to read for, for class, right? What's next after Tawheed will be a Tawheed? Uluhi, right? 
person understands that, right? The family understands that, husband, wife, kids, right? All the way down the line. You know, understands that they have to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, right? person does that, right? Then we find that everyone or the temperament of the household will be a household that their main focus and their goal is to do what? Worship Allah. What do you think the climate of the household would be if that's everybody's main goal to worship Allah? Right? The husband's ready to pray. Wife is what? Ready to pray. Kids ready to pray. Ramadan come in. We're going to do this worship for who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's save this money and do what? Go where? Umrah. Let's save this money going hard. So the temperament of the household is what? The worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What's that going to do for the household? Right? Like we said, the, the lectures on the, that we have, they're, they're good. But like at the end of the day, we have to work on our what? Our creed. Getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? So that it creates a household right? that will be focused on the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? And likewise, everyone in the household, they realize that they have to worship Allah, that they will fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? Before they say something, they would, they would ponder and realize that they're going to be taken to account for what they say or what they, what they do. They would fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's, that's a big key. When we studied the book, right, we did a book a few months ago, a while ago. Uh, right, uh, divorces is reasons and is cure, something like that, right? You know, they said the number one reason for divorce is in that book anyway. You know, it was mentioned number one reason for divorce, take a stab at it. If I, I hope I'm not mistaken, but I believe this is the number one, right? Take a stab at it. Now, what you say? What you say? All right, what else? I'm thinking about what you say. Thinking about, not thinking about what you say. What else? Lack of religiosity. Number one reason for divorce, right? In that book anyway, a lack of what? Religiosity from either spouse, whether it be the husband or the what? Wife. A lack of what? Fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Going back to their what? Tawheed and their Aqidah. Right? Another example, right? Tawheed al Asma wa Sifat. Right? Tawheed al Asma wa Sifat. Right? The husband and the wife, right? They understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Samir al Basir. Right? He's an all hearer. Right? And an all seer. How do you think they're going to they behave in the house? Right? How, they, how are you going to behave with your wife? How are you going to behave with, you know, the wife going to behave with their husband? You know, Allah hears and sees what? Allah hears and sees what? Everything. Right? Husband knows that Allah is a shakur. Right? The one is going to give him the re reward for the slightest of what? Deeds. Right? So when his wife doesn't thank him, does it bother him? No. Right? Because he knows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is well. Of course, kids, they, you know, you know, sometimes kids, they don't appreciate the effort that you, they don't know that you, the hours that you work, right? They don't know the work that you put in. And you do something for them and they act like it's the worst thing in the what? World. Right? And you done did something good for them. And they act like, like you owed it to them, right? All types of scenarios. But... Your Tawheed is right. You understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a shakur. And he's the one that's going to reward you for the slight, the, the littlest of what? Deeds. Right? Or, right, the family has gone through some rough times financially. Right? We on what now? Tawheed what? Ismail was he fat. Family has gone through some what? Rough times. Going through some rough times, right? And the spouses, they don't start bickering at one another, getting all stressed out. He says, you know what? Allah is what? ar right? I'm trying, I'm striving, I'm not sitting around doing nothing. Right? Times are just a little what? Hard. He says, you know what? Allah is ar -Razak. And she says, you know what? Allah is also what? al Right? So the situation what? Subsides. All due to their what? Aqeed and creed. Right? So the, the effect of, of, of creed on, on the household is... It's tremendous, right? A few more examples, right? We move on, right, to belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? We look, just look at the six pillars of faith, right, in the household. And again, we not really taking this conversation outside of the what? The household, right? Belief in the law. We already discussed that a little bit, right? Belief in the angels, right? The spouses, everybody in the household believes in the angels. How are you going to talk to your wife if you know the angels is writing? Right? How is she going to talk to her husband if she know that the angels is what? Right, and how she going? She should she not shouldn't be popping that fly off at the mouth, right? 
They say things, but you know, you're not going to get totally out of hand. Because you know, the angels is what? Right. And that's part of what? Creed. That's your creed. You don't got to call the imam and you know, I do all that. Just the angels is what? Right. And check yourself. Don't got to be a long, drawn out phone call. Right. Or, right, they believe in the books. Right. Part of belief, believe it in the books. And you're going to search for your guidance. Where at? In the Quran. Right. If you need some guidance, you don't know what's going on, you need to figure it out, things is going haywire, you're going to open up the what? Book of Allah. Right? Due to your what? Belief. Right? You move to the messengers. Right? Things are going haywire, you don't know what to do, you know, trying to improve your household, you're going to go try to find your guidance where? In the sunnah. Because you believe that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger, messenger of Allah. Right? Likewise, you got the belief in the last day. Right? Husband and wife, they believe in the last day. Likewise, that's going to have an immediate effect on your behavior because you know that whatever you say or whatever you do, you're going to have to do what? Answer for it. Right? You're going to have to answer for it. Belief in the last day. Right? Likewise, a divine decree. Right? And divine decree, um, qadr, right? Sometimes your spouse or your children, they do things that have a what? They have an effect on you. Right? They may do something that hurts your feelings. Right? Or you might do something that does what? Hurts her feelings. Or the kids might act ungrateful. Whatever. And, you know, it's not a pass to do any of those things. We're not giving a pass for those things. But we're talking about if a person, you know, is firm in their belief in the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? They say, qadr Allah wa ma sha'a fa'al. Right? Whatever just happened, it was the what? The decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not just take it on the what? Take it on check. And I know that it's a what? A test. To see how I'm going to what? React. So, you know, these are basic things. The three categories of Tohi, right? The six pillars of faith. We can get those down, right? Maybe we won't have to have so many what? Family lectures. Right? Won't have so many issues on. But the point being is that we got to identify the what? The, the root of the problem. Sometimes we want to talk about subsidiary issues and thick rulings and things of that nature, and it's all good. There's no problem with that, right? But at the end of the day, you got to focus. Is no, and we say it over and over and over again. There's no way to skip that. There's no way to skip rectifying your creed. You got to rectify your creed, right? So it's just a brief reminder, right? Just a brief reminder to stay focused on, right? Stay focused on your creed. Stay focused on your classes on on creed. Stay focused on your lectures on creed. Right? And trying to improve your trying to prove your aqidah. Right? And likewise, you know, these words are discouragement, right? Discouragement from busying yourself, looking for the solutions in the wrong places. Right? These words are just an encouragement, right? Or a discouragement from looking for um, solutions in the wrong what? The wrong places. Right? The wrong places, whether it be too many marriage workshops. Right? That, you might be looking for a solution in the wrong the workshop in itself is good. But you yourself, you might be looking for the solution in the wrong what? Place. You might not fear Allah. You might not, if, you don't, if you're not obeying Allah who's apparent with the Allah and carrying out the rights of your Lord, how do you expect your life to be? Right? So you're looking elsewhere when you need to really, be, you're looking in the wrong place. You need to be looking at the, at the core issue of the, of the problem. Right? Whoever fears Allah, then they'll make a way what? Out for him, right? Marital hardship, right? That's a what? It's a hardship, right? Marital strife and issues in the house, that's a, that's a real live what? Hardship. And if you fear Allah, then the law will make a way what? Out. Right? Rectify the situation. Right, so this, these words are discouragement from looking for place, looking for uh, results, right, or corrective measures in the wrong places, whether it be um, too many marriage workshops. Because sometimes, you know, you know, per person can really go, really go overboard with that, and, and they don't, they don't talk about creed at all, right? That's not like that's not even part of the problem, right? Or wrong place, you may be going to look for advice from from non-Muslims. 
You might be going to look for advice from non-Muslims, but at the end of the day, you want to look for your advice. It goes back to what we're saying. You want to look for your advice and your corrective measures where? In the book, in the what? The Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And a person that can help you and guide you and counsel you that's going to give you advice from those what? Sources. Because you may not be able to find them, but you may know someone from Ahlul Sunnah, right? From the people of the Sunnah to guide you that Allah said this, right? And the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said that. So likewise, we don't want to look for corrective measures in the, right? in the wrong sources, whether it be too many marriage workshops, too many, or advice of non-Muslims. And another example of that, culture. Right? You try to rectify an affair because this is what my sisters used to do. Right, we try, you know, my brother, that's what he schooled me on. He told me, you know, if it's in a situation like this ever happened, then you know that my older brother told me to do this. Right, or my people, this is what, you know, if it's a situation like that, this is what my, my people or my, you know, my race, this is what they do in order to rectify that situation. So you return back to what? Culture. So, you know, just wanted to offer those words of um, encouragement, right? Words of encouragement that... We look for corrective measures, right, in the right places. And it's really an encouragement to stay diligent in the classes of, the classes of creed, right, to stay, and we should have that zeal, right, and that attendance, right, and, you know, just the all-out effort, right, um, likewise for the classes of, classes of creed.